Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Wild Your Garden. And in this video, it's one of my favourite days of the year. I'm back at a site that I created back in 2010. So this site is now 12 years old, and it's time to carry out some hay meadow management. And what a wonderful, wonderful place this is. This is an incredible wildflower meadow, which is extremely diverse due to the methods that we use to create it. Whereas we stripped the topsoil off and then got down to some really poor sandy soils and now it's just absolutely teeming. You wouldn't believe the look of this place in the spring and summer, even in the late summer as well. It's now mid-October, getting towards the end of October. So it's a little bit late, but this site is not too bad because it's so sparse the vegetation, as you can see. We can afford to carry out a hay cut later on uh, because there's not much vegetation to sort of fold over. The later you leave a hay cut, um, the, it tends to sort of the grasses and everything the vegetation folds over and it can smother out a lot of the wildflowers and for the best time to cut your meadow do check out one of my previous videos that I'll put a link to at the end of this video which is all about the best times pros and cons so we won't go into that today but today is all about the management of this meadow so we've got our little agri mower which we're going to use to cut the meadow if you like unfortunately I'd love to do it by scythe but um, due to time constraints and many, many meadows that I manage at this time of year, obviously I don't have the luxury of time, unfortunately, to be able to scythe these meadows. But I do go through and check for reptiles and amphibians. Um, but of course, leaving the meadow later is obviously better as well because there's a lot less um, insect life and things around at this time of year as we get towards November. So pros and cons again. So there's many, many uh, questions about around that I get asked all the time around when to manage a meadow but um yeah this is this is when it's going to happen so we're going to get in here today cut a lot of this vegetation and create some grass stacks where there have been grass snakes in previous years laying eggs in them so a really good byproduct is the obviously the hay that comes off we don't bale this hay generally because there's not a great deal of it it's not worth it. and the access to this site is is pretty restrictive so it's not great, if you know what I mean, for a, a production of hay bales. So we often just cut and collect, remove all the cuttings and stack them in a heap so that we can then um, basically provide another habitat. There's a river that runs along the back of the site just down there, um, which is a lovely little river. It's the River Gwash, one of the uh, Gwash, I think. No, it's not. It's the Glen. Sorry. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm further that way. One of the Glens, East Glen or West Glen, I can't remember. And that runs past the edge of this site here in Lincolnshire, which is a great corridor for a lot of things to move along. And obviously grass snakes, great swimmers. So they use that for moving along, no doubt. And they do come and lay eggs here in the grass heaps that we provide. So yes, we've got a glorious October day. The sun is absolutely shining. It's some nice high, nice high pressure, blue skies, so better get the mower out and make a start. Well, Flynn has been very busy, haven't you, mate? Yes, mate. <laughs> well, I've been off to fetch the reinforcements, aka the tractor, to collect the hay. Flynn has done a fantastic job um, of cutting the meadow using the agri mower, which is somewhere over there, uh, which does a great job. It's really quite efficient at 
you know, cutting through the vegetation. Uh, we set it on a high level, about three inches, mate, wouldn't you say? Yeah, 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 yeah just over three inches. Yeah, just to just to leave some vegetation. We've got Frank as well helping us, doing his very best at the moment. Uh, just to leave some vegetation um, for the invertebrates, for a lot of the caterpillars and larval, uh, the larval food plants here, a lot of the grasses, things like the meadow browns and that sort of thing, will actually go down into the base of these plants um, over winter and uh, over winter as, as larvae there. So it's good to cut on a high setting when you do... Um, you know one of these cuts if you are managing a meadow just so that you leave some vegetation for you know kind of the voles that sort of thing we've had a few bank voles here haven't we mate yes, they've been yeah, scuttling yeah. around so um the main thing i would point out is that we have left all of that back area there as vegetation and we've got all these banks around here as vegetation we're just going to trim a little bit of the marjoram you can see if i walk around here um it's just kind of folded over a bit so we we need to kind of you know cut that back to let that naturally regenerate so it doesn't smother everything else out um, but this block of marjoram is absolutely thick with butterflies in the kind of the midsummer boom if you like it's all your gatekeepers meadow browns ringlets it's just skippers as well essex small and large on this site so it's really really fantastic as a larval for, uh, as a nectar source we get marble white here as well so that's really 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 fantastic as a source of nectar for these insects and we are sporadically leaving patches as well and around some of the clumps of the trees we're leaving blocks of vegetation so the most important thing about any kind of management like this is to leave a mosaic of habitats you know you don't want to take everything out in one go so it's yeah really really good Sadly, now we've got to go and collect this all up, uh, which is why I bought the tractor. So we can at least go round and using the hay forks, fork it into the tractor bucket because the grass heap is a little way, 100 yards or so that way. So it would take us quite a while with wheelbarrows. And as we are on a bit of a time constraint, it's always good to have a little bit of mechanical aid, if possible. Not that you need it, of course. So anybody watching this thinking, well, I haven't got a tractor. Obviously, you don't need to... Uh, have a tractor to do an area like this i've done this many a year with just the old uh, rake and a wheelbarrow so and a hay fork that's all you really need it just takes a bit longer of course so i can't delay it any longer i'm gonna have to get this site raked up so stick around and watch us rake this site now into piles before we can then go around with the tractor and collect it up Well, that's all of the hay that's been cut raked into these lines now, which just makes it a lot easier for collecting. I can now drive along these central sort of causeways, if you like, with the tractor and 
fork it all in the bucket with the hay forks which obviously makes life a lot easier and it breaks it down into more bite-sized chunks if you were to tackle this size of field by hand with a rake you'd probably get a bit demoralized and give up so uh, and it's nice and easy with two of you you can just kind of work the stuff into the middle from one side and then work from that side and come back into this side so yeah it's a really nice way of doing it it's nice and easy breaks it up a little bit so that's everything in lines now we've got to go and collect the hay and add it to the grass pile for the grass snakes but before we do that i just want to show you something pretty cool so as part of the ongoing management of this site obviously we try and leave as i said earlier in the video sort of clumps and tussocks around the site so it's still some vegetation it's still some habitat and the most important thing you should take from this video today if you take nothing else is the fact that your garden along with many others or many other outdoor spaces should be managed uh, as a mosaic of habitats and not just everything cut you know so if you've got a hedgerow cut it on a rotation if you've got a coppice belt cut it on a rotation when i say that and obviously if you want to know more about coppice belt management and the benefits of coppices for or coppice belts for wildlife they are incredible then check out a video that i'm going to put a link to at the end of this one they really are an incredible habitat for a lot of wildlife um, but if you're going to manage like that like i say do it on a rotation so if you've got i don't know let's say three shrubs in your garden and they're all the same you've got three hazels coppice one one year coppice one the next year and coppice one the year after so you've always got successional regrowth it's a larval food plant you've got dense nesting um, clump forming material at the bottom where the new shoots are going to come back up with a lot of vigor so it's all that sort of stuff which is explained more as i say in the video if you make it through to the end of this one so i hope you stick around for that but what i wanted to show you was some of this devil's bit scabious which is now well actually it's the 25th of october it's the day before my birthday and um what a nice present this is the devil's bit scabious it's still flowering here in this meadow devil's bit scabious a wonderful plant and it's very very good for a lot of pollinators if you've been watching the channel for a while you will have seen me talk about devil's bit scabious quite a lot no doubt and i plant it around the damp margins around nearly every wildlife pond that i create it is as well the larval food plant for the marsh fritillary which is quite a scarce butterfly so don't expect it to just pop into your garden one day unless you live next door to a marsh fritillary site of course but um, a wonderful butterfly in its own right looks like a kind of a um a stained glass window almost gorgeous sort of checkerboard of uh, sort of yellow and orange and black um, really really beautiful butterfly one of our wonderful fritillaries that we have here in the uk um, so that has a the larval food plant which is devil's bit scabious sadly it doesn't proliferate here on this site we're quite away from the nearest site which from here south lincolnshire uh, is probably an hour and a half maybe away just a, at least over an hour away so not much chance of them colonizing here um, but lots and lots of other butterflies do of course live on this site 30 species have been recorded might even be 31 I'll have to check. Uh, but there's a minimum of 30 species of butterfly that have been recorded on this one acre site now. So absolutely wonderful to know that this really is a thriving site. And when you come through here in the spring and the summertime, it is just a blaze of colour. There is always something out right from um, sort of February, March time when the, the primroses march, shall we say, when the primroses start coming out right the way through up until... 25th of October which is just brilliant with this devil's bit scabious there's one or two little hawk bits out as well and it is just an incredible site and the most important thing you want to do when you're trying to create nectar and pollen for the insects in your garden is to have a prolonged flowering period so the more plants you can put in the better and the more variety the earlier they can start flowering and the later they can finish flowering the more chance you have of providing food for lots and lots of insects bees butterflies you know we've still got butterflies flying around today there's red admirals still being recorded they'll want to nectar on something had a small white through fly through the site as well today so even as we get towards november there are still one or two things about bees as well on this site today so they obviously need to um, keep their energy levels up as well so yes prolonged nectar period remember that one if you can guys so devil's bit scabious nice to see that flowering and we are now going to get on and start clearing all these rows of hay <laughs> wish us luck
Well guys, as you can see behind me now, we have one times cut wildflower meadow. And that was a bit of work, I'm not gonna lie. Made easier by the tractor, of course. But as I say, you don't have to have vast acres to have something like this. And I ought to say, before we go any further, if you are looking to buy any wildflower seed, any wildflower plants, plugs, anything like that, please do check out the wildyourgarden.com online shop where we can, of course, supply you with everything you need in the UK to create one of these wildflower meadows, which, although at the moment it just looks like a rough cut field, trust me, this place in summer is spectacular. And to think that we have now, since this has been created, since it was a potato field just 12 years ago, we have now over half of the British butterflies that are listed as being British butterflies and breeding in the UK recorded here on this site so it's been incredible to see the transformation over the last 12 years and it's an honor to look after this site and maintain it now so you can see we've left some tussocks we've got some longer patches here and there we've got that longer tussock patch at the back obviously which has never ever actually ever been cut which is really good for the barn owls and the kestrels to hunt through for voles and mice and things so that's really good and then we've obviously got these banks as well didn't quite get time to get the sides of the banks done so we've got another day to come back and do the tops and the sides of the banks um, which we will do at some point in the near future but as you can see, Devil's Bit Scabia is still flowering. So there's still stuff about, there's still a few insects in the air. I mean, it's quite mild, to be honest, for October. It's been 15, 16 degrees today, um, which is average, I guess. But we're nearly in November now. So, um, yeah, blessed with a very nice day to carry out this hay cut. Anyway, thank you so much to Flynn, obviously, for helping me out today. He's been a great help. And thank you to everybody for you all for watching. That's, that's been a real pleasure to... Um, bring you this video today and to show you some of the ways in which I manage these wildflower meadows and of course if you are interested in anything that is to do with your own garden your own property any landscaping projects then please do give me a shout at hazelwoodlandscapes at hotmail.com or inquiries at wildyourgarden.com where of course I can carry out the consultations and indeed installations of some pretty special places like this so if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and give the video a like if you've enjoyed it, guys. And thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you all on the next video. Take care. I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.